welcome back so for this talk it will be write your own model handler for run inference by ritesh uh, uh, ritesh is a software engineer at google he's a committer at apache beam working on go sdk and python and he'll walk you through it thanks all right so uh, welcome back everyone uh, you might have heard a lot of times till now the word run inference and how you can do run inference in just one line but you might have noticed that the run inference transform itself it accepts a model handler parameter and that's what we're going to learn today how to write a model handler uh, like in apache beam repo we have a couple of pre-built model handlers uh, for different frameworks but in your case you might need a different framework so you might want to write your own model handler or you might have a different input types so you might want to uh, write a custom one for that specific case so we're going to learn that how to write it and hopefully you can if you can uh, contribute to the beam repo we are, we are always supportive uh, getting more contributions in from the community uh, so yeah let's get started so a little bit about me i'm based in durham north carolina uh, so i started contributing to apache beam uh, approximately like two years ago um, i started with uh, uh, go sdk to start with uh, it had a lot of batch features but i mostly contributed to the streaming features uh, in the go sdk and from the like past six months i have been also contributing to uh, python and ml side of things in the apache beam uh, in my free time, I just like watch, uh, like to watch and play cricket. Uh, I follow F1 a lot, and on a long weekend, I just want uh, get out with my friends uh, to explore something. This is me exploring uh, Colorado uh, last week, uh, long weekend. So yeah, uh, as I talked about, you know, uh, why do we need a model handler? It's a required parameter for an inference, and uh, yeah, will uh, it, it also has like a couple of advantages to it. Uh, we'll talk about it in the coming slides. So basically, what is a model handler? So a model handler is just like a normal class uh, defined in the base.py file in the GitHub repo. So whenever you want to write your own model handler, you basically extend this class uh, to write your own. So it has three specific types that you have to provide. The first one is the example T, which is the input type. So let's say you want to write a model handler for TensorFlow framework using tensorflow tensors then your example t is basically a tensor type or for numpy it may be numpy and the prediction t is basically the output type that would be returned from your run inference so in beam we have uh, a uh, we have defined a prediction type called as prediction result i'll talk about that in coming slides and the third and last type is the model type model class type so for tensorflow models the model class is usually the tf dot module for PyTorch, it's toss.module and so on for different frameworks. So that's the third parameter. Um, so yeah, whenever like we are writing a model handler, uh, we first decide on a specific framework. We usually try to keep it like one framework, one model handler that gives us like uh, clarity in what we want to do with that model handler. And also it's easy for users to uh, not remember like too much of things. It just, you just focus on PyTorch so you can just uh, focus on things related to PyTorch and uh, write a model handle on that one. Then the couple of advantages of it are like, uh, it avoids uh, repetitive, uh, repetitive steps uh, that you might have uh, also learned from the carry stock, uh, Reza stock. Uh, so you can basically define how do you want to load the model? How do you want to initialize your model? How do you want to run the inference using that model? So all that can be wrapped up inside a model handler so this is basically you write it once, but after that in your future pipelines, you can do inference with just single line of code. So that's the beauty of it. Um, other than that, like it uh, leverages Beam's internal features. Uh, like uh, there's an automatic model refresh, which has been added recently to Beam. Uh, this is very useful in case where you have a streaming pipeline and there's a new model you have trained in between a pipeline. So basically you can hot swap it with the new model. Um, there's a talk as well uh, uh, later this afternoon. Uh, and there's one recent functionality which got added, which is like you can share your large model between the processes so that it is loaded only just on one worker and other workers can use it. 
Uh, this is like a very recent addition to the Run Inference API as well. So uh, yeah, let's get uh, started like to write the model handler itself. Uh, so uh, once you have like decided your input and output types, uh, so you can, uh, if you want to support both NumPy, tensors, and uh, other types, you can do it in the single model handler as well. But it is usually recommended to use just one type so that it is easy for you to write the internal functions of it. Like whenever you want to do a stacking of tensors, you can just do tf.stack and not worry about the uh, type of input, like to do the if checking there. So these are like the four key functions that we'll be implementing for writing the model handler. Uh, so the load model is where, uh, so this model handler class is called by the run inference transform. So what run inference transform expects is that uh, this load model function will actually return uh, the load uh, model by loading it. And the run inference function here, this is where like the magic happens. Like this is where uh, you would do model.predict. And there are like two, two other functions like the update model path is uh, the hot swap function that we talked about. And there are some other internal functions that run inference transform needs. Uh, so there is one called get num bytes. It's basically uh, calculate the size of your batch element uh, for the run inference transform. So uh, yeah, like uh, let's go step by step. We have our, uh, uh, as I said, like we'll uh, take TensorFlow uh, framework. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, no, you can't uh, like unload them all. Um, yeah, with the, like right now there's no functionality like to uh, unload them all, uh, but yeah, we can uh, see that happens. Uh, so yeah, once we have like decided that I want to do a TensorFlow model handler and I want to do it for tensors, I have that sorted out. Then what I'll do is I'll just extend the model handler class that I showed in the previous slides. So, so whenever like you are naming your ten, uh, a model handler, your usual uh, notion is uh, you give the framework name first, then the model handler and then the input type. So it would, I had just shorthand TensorFlow or TF here. Uh, but yeah, this this is how the signature for that uh, model handler class would look like. So as, as I explained, a prediction result is just a name tuple for your prediction output, where example is uh, the field which contains the uh, examples on which we will do the predictions and inference will store the output of that prediction. So uh, now we have uh, figured out like what types and what framework will support. Now we have to figure out uh, how are the ways, how many are the ways like we want to support loading of model. So there can be different ways you want to load your model uh, according to different frameworks. But for TensorFlow, like primarily you can do uh, load the entire model or you can uh, use the saved weights to load the model from. Uh, so we'll just focus on the first point like uh, how to load it from a model path. But the second step is not much different. It's just like you have to pass different things uh, when initializing that model handler. So uh, let's see how it looks like. Um, so since we are just using a model path, our constructor basically just needs to know about the model URI here. The And sometimes it may happen like when you trained your model and saved it, you might have used some custom objects, uh, uh, sorry, custom config to save your model. And you might want to give that custom config as well when you are loading the model. So the uh, you can use a kvarg here, which is called as load model args. Now this kvargs will be supplied when you are like loading the model internally. And there's the inference function like uh, Kerry briefly touched that. So inference function is basically a function where you will do the model dot predict. But uh, it's a good practice to give a default inference function, which would normally do model dot predict. But in case of generative AI models and some other models. There are other functionality other than predict. You can do model.generate as well for some generative AI models. So, so there's a, a custom, uh, customizability option for users to provide their own inference function here. Uh, but yeah, it just like gets all the information that we would need to load and run the model here. So uh, yeah, for TensorFlow, like in case of TensorFlow, uh, uh, the TensorFlow framework is able to infer automatically if there's a GPU in it and it can use it. So our like load model function here is basically just wrapping up the Keras uh, load model function. But in case of PyTorch, we would need to convert like, uh, we need to explicitly specify that we want to use GPU. So that stuff would happen in this function. Uh, 
uh, but it is like pretty straightforward, like just wrapping the uh, load model function here. Uh, now this is like the actual run inference function. So in this case, like I have used uh, a default uh, tensor function, uh, which uh, which basically what it does is stacks all the tensors that we have received so far, and we perform a prediction and return it as a prediction result. So there's a utility in the Apache Beam repo, uh, convert to result. What it does is it's uh, basically populates uh, the prediction result name tuple with the prediction and the examples. And the run inference transform basically expects the model handler's run inference to return this uh, prediction result out from uh, this model handler. So that's what we're going to make sure that uh, our run inference function returns in that format. Uh, here. So uh, yeah, it's like pretty much uh, uh, just using the model class. Uh, you can also use like model.predict here to uh, get the inferences. Uh, then there's like another component. So these all methods are like basically the methods in the base class of model handler. Here we are just implementing it as per our needs for the current model handler. Uh, so the model automatic model refresh, this is uh, like this is basically a function which accepts a string path and whatever path you had given earlier in your constructor for the model URI, it will basically get replaced with this new path. So uh, this is like, uh, so this model is, uh, this function is basically used by the run inference transform that ha how that happens under the hood, I think Anand is going to talk it uh, talk on it in this room itself at 3.30. So do tune in like how that happens uh, internally. So there are like other uh, methods for the base model handle class. Like some of them are just for the metrics sakes. Like there's one get, get metrics namespace. Uh, you can provide resources about your model handler by overriding that. Uh, it basically returns a dictionary uh, of a KVAX like like these other resources. Uh, you can specify uh, batching as well uh, in your model handler. So you can have min batch size and max uh, max batch size. So you can implement this method in your model handler for that purpose. Uh, so there's one new addition to the uh, model handler base class, which is shared model across processes. So right now, like our model handlers doesn't have this uh, function implemented in it, but like uh, it's just a, a function which returns a Boolean value. Like if you want to enable this for your model handler, you can just say you know, return true, or if you want to disable it, you can say return false. You can uh, configure it as well when you are initializing it in your model handler. So uh, yeah. So like putting it all together, like the four individual functions that we saw, uh, we just like put them all together. You might see the get num bytes uh, an extra function there. Uh, it's basically just calculating the size of our batch elements. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's let's put this into an actual example pipeline. Uh, like this, like uh, this is like a model for that to predict the multiplication of five table. Um, so this is like the same model handler that I've uh, uh, defined right now. I've used the same thing, and as you can see, it's like once you have written it, it's just one line to load the model handler and then pass it to the run inference. I'll also show a Jupyter notebook uh, on this one uh, how this works. Uh, yeah, and there's another concept called a keyed model handler. So when you have like, in when you have a keyed input, so you don't need to write a new model handler again for that kind of inputs. What you can do is you can basically as simple as just wrap your currently written model handler inside a keyed model handler class, uh, which is already there in the Beam uh, repo. So yeah, as simple as that, like just uh, wrap it up in the keyed model handler. So we right now like have like Onyx, PyTorch, Escalon, TensorFlow, uh, TensorRT, and XGBoost model handlers. Uh, Hugging Face and Vertex AI are coming soon. Uh, there's a like reference link that would show all the uh, model handlers in the repo. Uh, some related uh, resources that you can check it out if, later if you want. So there was a very good talk uh, on the run instance API itself in last Beam Summit as well. Uh, so that's there. There's an example notebook with uh, specifically TensorFlow model handler. Now this is like little bit more uh, advanced, um, advanced in the sense that it can load models from saved weight as well, uh, as well as from the TensorFlow hub. So there's one specific example for that. Uh, also like there are uh, multiple ML notebooks for different model handlers. Uh, 
specifying like image classification tasks sentence classification and all that stuff uh, and there's a, like a design doc of run inference api if you want to learn more uh, in de uh, details about it uh, so i will before taking question i'll just do a quick demo so yeah like just uh, copy pasted like what i've shown in the slides uh, i have my uh, TF model and the tensor class over here. Uh, just uh, go one by one. Then I just create a simple model for testing. Uh, this is like just getting numbers from uh, 0 to 100, uh, multiplying it by 5, and training the model on that uh, for the sake of an example. Uh, then we just saved it to a specific path. And yeah, like we want to like, because we want to format like the output in a specific way, we just define a format output Dufin. But yeah, um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much like, uh, as we saw, like we just wrote the model handler tensor, we got it working, it's here. So yeah, now you know like how to write a model handler. So I saw like one, I, I remember like someone asked a question in Kerry's talk, like uh, are you going to support, uh, I forgot like what the name was, uh, I think you asked. Uh, so you now you know how to write a model handler. Now, if you want to contribute, feel free. Uh, like we are very supportive in getting more model handlers in into the Apache Beam. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the working of how uh, the model handler works. Uh, yeah, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.